Ingason against uh, Sigurdsson. Well, we're going to look at this from the black side and we'll be right back as I said. So this game was also played in the in the Icelandic League. Uh, the Icelandic League has uh, four divisions that play in the uh, top division. Then we have second, third and fourth division. This game was in second or third, probably third. Apol apologies if, I, if I'm mistaken. So with the white pieces was uh, Sigurdur Ingason, who is, uh, I can't remember, 16 or 1700. And with the black pieces, Arnjotur Sigurdsson, my friend and musician, who has, uh, I believe, over 1800. And it's like we have like a monthly tournament in a, in a cafe downtown, which usually has a, like uh, 20, 24 players. Well, maybe 30 to be, to be more exact. And every time, like the first round or second round, I seem to always play him. And I always a black and we always play the same gambit. He uh, he likes to play this uh, Nimsovitz gambit, which is uh, here he plays, yeah, queen g4. The Nimsovitz gambit, I think I take, he plays knight of three. I may, I might, I may, I may play knight g6 first. Doesn't really matter. And then I play queen a5, jack and queen b6. It's an interesting gambit. I know that uh, uh, the chess. What's the name of a streamer? Chess coach. He plays this as well. And I played it. I played this against him. But okay. In this game, he was black against. Uh, yeah, this 1600 player, Sigurd Ingason. So what I'm trying to say is he's a very aggressive, likes to play interesting, ga interesting games, interesting gambits, and go for interesting ideas. And this game is, is very unique. <laughs> Bishop d5, Br you know, brace yourself, brace yourself. C6. Okay, very often it's uh, useful to, to open up for the queen, once white has played bishop g5. So I'm sure this is uh, a very playable move. And now he played knight a6. And this is something that you, uh, you, you've seen in the Karakhan. And thank you MPTM for the follow. Uh, and the idea of course is you play queen a5, you don't get the double pawns. Even if you did, it's maybe not you know a strategy. Let's say knight c3, and you take this. Yes, Thomas, we'll have, we'll have a look after this. The Dutch, the Dutch is fun, guys, come on. This, this sort of reminds me of... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, compare Artlo to, to a little bit to uh, a legendary figure in Icelandic chess called Benoni uh, Benedetson. Who, who, he played very, very creatively against Balashov, Grandmaster. He played, he either played g5, which I think Carlson played recently, or he played queen f6 and then g5. Let's say, uh, let's say castles, g5. He played, he played something crazy like this against, uh, against Balashov. Andrew. And he liked to, uh, I guess, e4. In the Karakhan, uh, he, he uh, he thought it was really amusing that after this he played knight d7. Of course, this is a blunder, but not a tactical one. Hello, Metal Legal and Cinesian. I don't think I uh, I welcomed you to the stream. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Uh, this is not. A tactical blunder, but a positional blunder because he loses the bishop. It's not a tactical blunder because you can you can win the piece back with uh, queen a5. But of course, this is just uh, what I like to call uh, a stupid Patrick. I mean, this, uh, this obviously does nothing. You just gave up the bishop here. 
Maybe it's playable. I mean, it's sort of like, uh, I don't know. You, you do get this, but you lost the bishop. I don't know. But of course, it, it's mostly a joke. But it's creative, and he liked creative stuff like this. So, okay, back to the game. After e3, knight a6. Uh, he, his opponent played knight e2. Yeah, it, it might be playable. I, 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 you know, if you want to play knight d7 and, you know, have fun with it, you know, go ahead. Uh, C Nation says he's attracted to d4, f5, e4 takes, knight c3, knight f6, p5. Yeah, I, I played that line as well for, for white. Let's taunt on gambit. But okay, let, let, let's keep our focus on this game. Now, notice this knight. It went from a6 to c7. Kind of reminded me of uh, the knight from uh, Casa Coli's game, knight e6, bishop h4. Now, unfortunately, a small blunder. g6, uh, I mean, looks logical. You want to play bishop d7, knight f6, and the knight might be useful here. But there's a tactical problem, unfortunately. and. Theodor Ingazon, he saw it, he took a, uh, a 5 piece of text, f 5 And of course the problem is if you take, you get made it very unceremoniously after queen h5. Check. So, uh, okay. So, yeah, white wins the pawn. But now look at this knight. Look at this journey. We managed to feel Chet of the Night in only seven moves. I once did a blog post about Fian Chet of the Night and the Night Fian Chet has been achieved in much fewer moves, but it's not very often you see the Knights like this. The Fian Chet of Night next to the other Fian Chet of Night. So maybe this is the, the fastest instance of a Fian Chet of Night next to another Knight. Okay, now uh, pitch it back to d3, d6, e4, queen b6, hitting this and this, e3, a5, threatening a4, so white played a4. And now he couldn't resist the artistry of this maneuver, bishop to e6, d5. Kind of forcing black into what he probably wanted, bishop f7. We managed to feel chat on the knight, put it next to the other bishop. Sorry, next to the other knight. So why not bring the bishops together as well? Uh, have you ever seen this? Probably haven't. This is uh, a very rare formation and I did uh, a database search in my database. Uh, which contains... 7,720,647 games and my database produced uh, only four games where uh, this occurred and in all four games it was late in the game like move 30 so this is the the fastest fastest occurrence of, of this formation ever and there's another thing as well which will be added which I can't reveal until the end of the game. So let's continue the game. Uh, of course white won a pawn and he is better. Actually much better. But that's besides the point. We're, 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 we're going for artistry here. We want to create something. And that's what Adler is trying to do. Create something. And he got this very, very rare formation of the pieces. Kudos for him, to him for that. And now he goes for the attack on, on the king side. Uh, bishop e7, queen d2, h5. Okay, trying to push against this bishop, but queen e3. Now, if you trade, the bishop gets a square. So, of course, being the aggressive player that he is, he uh, avoids the trade. He goes for h4, queen uh, h3, sorry, d7. I would consider h3 for white here, just trying to lock down the king side. But he took on c6 and decided to go for material. Now white is getting tactical. If you take this, 
I'll play bishop e5 and your queen is lined up here and will be lost. So you can't take the knight. So Ardladur just went for the sacrifice. Knight f6. Giving up the exchange. Queen d2. Maybe he should have gone for the queen trade. Queen a7. But he wanted the pawn. Now he took an a5. Again, I would have considered, you know, shutting things down on the king side. But he didn't. King f8. Offering the trade, of course not. Grabs another pawn, and now white is ready to, to push this pawn. Black is completely lost, but that's besides the point. We're trying to attack here, and sometimes to get a successful attack, you have to take on a lost position. So let's see, knight f4. But where is the attack coming from? Well, let's throw something into the fire, knight takes t2. And knight h5. Well, not yet, sorry, t4. And after f4, knight h5. Okay, trying to activate the knight. We, sti uh, we still need more fuel, fuel on the fire. And Seudor trying to uh, liquidate, plays bishop c4. Hello, Frank Horrigan. Queen c8 check, bishop e8. And this allowed white the chance to liquidate. And that's what he did. He played. Queen f5 to trade. I mean, he's completely winning. He's up a rook. He has a passed a pawn. Let's just trade the queens. Why not? Well, I can give you two reasons why not. Can you give me one? <laughs> Guess what? Guess what, guys? Out town. Okay, before we finish, before we finish, let's go back. Let's go back to the magical formation where we maneuver the bishop. A la 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 long. We maneuver the bishop to get the uh, bishop duo. We maneuver the knight. To get, to get what? To get a fear and settled knight next to the other knight. And in the end, who are the two guys that finished the job? You guessed it. This bishop that went in this circle, it comes around to c6. Regrettably, white resigned because he should have allowed this knight who traveled on this journey e6, g7, h5, f4, to h3, to finish the, the job with a bishop. So this is the only game where this interesting formation of, of the Fianciato Knight and uh, the duo of the bishops is reached. And the player reaching it wins the game. This is the only instance where the one that had this formation won actually won the game. So, you know, kudos to Adlodir. Uh, fantastic game. Fantastic, super fantastic. I loved it. I hope you enjoyed it as well, guys. And, you know, yeah, I always love these little uh, interesting, interesting things about chess. And this was definitely one of them. Yeah, Black spent like half a game moving the same two pieces and still won. Fantastic game. I really enjoyed that one. Looking forward to the, Well, I'll probably make a blog post, but uh, I'm not sure uh, this will make it to new in chess. Okay, let's have a, I mean, I do have... Let's see. Copy game. I'll show you the other games. The, the four games that I managed to cook up. La 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 long, long 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 long. This blows the dots wide open, doesn't it? Okay, let's just uh, randomly look at. First game was knight f3. We're not going to analyze the game. I, I haven't looked at it. No clue what happens. It's a king's Indian. Uh, what's it called? Panda variation. 
be five, he should be two. Actually, most of the games had, you know, reasonably strong players. Blah, 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 bishop c3, trade, b file, take over, knight has to retreat, wins a pawn. And here comes knight a6, bishop c7, and knight b8. And here we have it. Q sweat. Uh, unfortunately for Rack, he lost this game because, like I said, this was the only only occurrence in history where uh, this peace formation was reached and the person reaching it won the game. Here's another example. Old Indian or something. Or rap defense, I don't know. So as you can see, most of the games where, where this happens, it is, it's late in the game. The touch, the touch is uh, it's a double-edged opening. I mean, you you will suffer some some very bad losses, but at least you will usually have a chance to win. And here we have it again. This is move thirty-nine. Kaka, and he lost the game. Uh, this guy played e4. Let's just go into the middle game. Oh, yeah, this one got it on move uh, twenty-seven. This was the third game, and I guess this is the fourth one, no, I already looked at this one. So it was d4, yeah, d4, b6 now. Got some hippo action, no, uh, kind of a king's indian, eventually. Unusual maneuvers by black, I'm, I'm guessing black is the one that, no, it was white, I remember it now, yeah. And here the knight comes, it's coming. It's coming over. The bishops are in place, and now finally, the knight is ready. And finally, we get it. This was the fourth game. So, four games in the history of competitive chess that we reach. This peace formation. Unbelievable stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. Uh, 